Blessed be our God. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hand of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with him. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, Jesus asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he, so if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish, Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? Peter said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrong wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent Jesus bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. Those who were standing near the fire asked him, you are not also one of Jesus' disciples, are you? Peter denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with Jesus? Again, Peter denied it. 
and at that moment the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters, so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, would we not have handed him over to you? Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So, you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After Pilate had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to the Jews, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them. Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw Jesus, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, we ought to die. He ought to die, because he was claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release Jesus, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. Pilate said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered we have no king but the emperor then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified so they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself he went out to what is called the place of the skull which in Hebrew is called Golgotha there they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. 
Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write, The King of the Jews, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they, had, so they said to another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for, who, for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew all that was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. He then bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows what, that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another pas passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, the tomb was nearby. They laid Jesus there. And he gave up his spirit. In the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Vacations are pretty rare when your dad is a dairy farmer, as mine was for the first eight years of my life. And the first vacation that we managed to have was in the summer of 1951. I was about three years old. My godmother had a cottage on the Alabama Gulf Coast, and we were sharing it with her family. What happened is my very first life memory. I assumed that my mother was in conversation with my godmother. They often were, and they were always animated conversations. My dad rushed into the surf, and I followed. But he didn't know it. Suddenly, there was no bottom, no surface. No light. Everything was kind of an opaque gray, and I was being tossed. And everything was swirling around. And by far, the very worst part was no air, no breath. And there were the arms. Hunger hurts. Thirst captures every moment. But suffocation grips like a vice. I will never forget those arms. I will never forget breath, light, life. Breath is so precious. And breath is the most precious gift that Jesus gives from the hardwood of the cross. Each year, something out of the passion story strikes me as especially riveting. Each year, even though I've heard this story and you have heard this story over and over again, each year, something leaps out of the story and arrests me and grabs me and it pierces to my heart. Jesus handed over his panema, where we get the word pneumatic. He handed over his breath. He handed over Breath, the breath of God, the creative and empowering and restorative breath, the spirit, the wind. He handed over the breath, the breath that the prophet Ezekiel envisioned when God asked Ezekiel that haunting question, Ezekiel. Can these bones live? Can dry bones in a desert live? And then God says to Ezekiel, call the Spirit. Prophesy to the four winds. Because these now fleshy bones need resuscitation.
this Good Friday is very different. The news, so much of the news, is all about breath. Governors want ventilators. Some people, on this day when we celebrate the anniversary of Jesus giving breath, some people are having difficulty breathing. This Good Friday is more about breath than any Good Friday I can remember. And breath is absolutely central to the story. St. John, the theologian of the fourth gospel, sees Pentecost not happening 50 days later. But Pentecost for St. John the theologian happens on the cross when Jesus hands over his spirit. And as Jesus hands over his spirit, the new church, the baby church, that church of a beloved disciple and a mother and some women friends, that little church, that baby church, takes its first breath in response to the gift that Jesus gives at such cost. I heard a sermon exactly 25 years ago last fall. And I don't remember many sermons, and I certainly don't remember many that I've preached. But I remember this one. My friend Tom Shaw was being consecrated as Bishop of Massachusetts. The service was held on an ice hockey rink, and my feet have never been as cold in my life. But I will never forget the preacher. When she said, The Lord Jesus birthed his church on the hard birthing bed of his cross out of his side with water and blood. And I thought, wow, thank God women get ordained. Because I had never seen the cross as the birthing bed out of which Jesus brought forth the church. We are birthed in water and blood, holy baptism and holy Eucharist. And like a newborn baby, slippery and maybe just a little gray, we need a puff. to get going. Air is desperately needed. And the passion, the thorns, the nails, the spear, all push towards this resuscitation moment of that new baby church gathered at the foot of a cross. The resuscitation of his new body, his church, his people, his hope for love being released first through him and now through us. And so he breathed one last time. 
and we now breathe. We breathe, we hope, we live in him, and we live for him. What does that look like on Good Friday, 2000 and about 2,000 years later? It looks like a nurse putting on a mask. It looks like shopping for a neighbor or rocking in a rocking chair on a front porch at least six and maybe 10 feet away from the other person rocking in the chair. What does it look like when we breathe the breath he gives at such cost? It looks like being an emotional lifeline in this moment. We glory in your cross, Lord Jesus, because we can breathe. Because he breathed, we are at every moment and in our final moment, just a breath away. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear people of God, our Heavenly Father sent His Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. That all who believe in Him might be delivered from the power of sin and death and become heirs with Him of everlasting life. We pray, therefore, for people everywhere according to their needs. 
Let us pray, pray for the Holy Catholic Church of Christ throughout the world, for all those who meet in homes on these holy days, for those isolated due to illness or age, that all your people might be one. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray, pray for all the nations and peoples, and peoples of, the of the earth, and for, and for those to whom their care are is entrusted, trusted, that, by, that God's by God's help they may seek justice and truth, and live, and live in peace and concord. One Almighty God, Kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace. And guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth. That in tranquility your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, pray for, for all, all who suffer and are afflicted in body or in mind for the, the hungry, hungry and the homeless, homeless the, the destitute, destitute and the oppressed, for the sick, the, the wounded, and the crippled, for those, for those in loneliness, fear, and anguish, for those who face temptation, doubt, selfishness, and despair, for the sorrowful and bereaved, for prisoners and captives, and those in mortal danger. May God in mercy comfort and relieve them and grant them the knowledge of his love and stir up in us the will and the patience to minister to their needs. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer, let the cry of those in misery and need come to you, that they may find your mercy present with them in all their afflictions. And give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us commit, commit ourselves, ourselves to, to God, God and, and pray, pray for, for the, the grace, grace of a holy, holy life that with all who have departed this world and have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to God alone, we may be accounted worthy to enter into the fullness of the joy of our Lord and receive the crown of life in the day of resurrection. God of unchangeable power and eternal light. Look favorably on your whole church that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up and things which had grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
We glory in your cross, O Lord. And praise and glorify your holy resurrection. For by, by virtue, virtue of, of your, your cross, joy has come to the whole world. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and praise and glorify your holy resurrection. For by virtue of your cross, joy has come to the whole world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. O Savior of the world, who by thy cross and precious blood hast redeemed us, save, save us and help us, we humbly beseech thee, O Lord.
Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the, the power, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray you to set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living, pardon and rest to the dead, to your holy church peace and concord, and to us sinners everlasting life and glory. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.